Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan in the background, and this is a hot take about Frank Miller and the recent controversy with him. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Please check out my books, links in the description. Woke a Santa novel, Holly Woke, another novel, political satire, and of course the Pineys, books one through six, comedy horror in South Jersey, book seven dropping soon. Obviously we missed July, but don't worry, it's gonna be early August. Um, also check out my other two videos, and hopefully little Joan will get out of her crate uh, on BitChute and Rumble. Now, Frank Miller. So the recent controversy with Frank Miller is he was supposed to go to this con. I won't even mention the con because who gives an F about the con? Um, and he was the headliner, head and shoulders, the headliner at the con. And they somebody complained and uh, for woke reasons, they uninvited him from the convention. Now, I have to explain the economics of a comic book convention to you and why this con essentially committed suicide. Um, not this particular iteration of it, but in the future, good luck, guys. You're, you, you effed yourself. You absolutely effed yourself. And you'll never come back from it, ever. Um... So, uh, and a little history on Frank Miller with, and me. I interviewed Frank Miller once for my old TV show, the comic book show, and I actually screwed up and I kind of made him cry because Jack Kirby had just died and I had been up all night at a Saturday Night Live party and I kind of broached the subject um, without thinking about it and it really upset him and I felt so bad because he was a huge... Uh, fan and I think friend of Jack Kirby and um, it, it, he really got upset um, and uh, we never showed it I don't think um, maybe you can see a little bit of it in the tail end of a of a, of a clip but um, but he was a really great guy now I had criticism of him I did my uh, anti-war comic about him at the time he had criticized Occupy Wall Street and um uh, at the time, I felt it was an old man rant. Yeah, like I should talk. Um, uh, Starenko had an old man rant, uh, I don't know if you remember, on a message board about The Pro, which was a comic book about a superpowered hooker. And he tied it into 9 11, said society is crumbling, blah, 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 blah. And everybody kind of went, eh, what? Um, Frank's was a little different. It was, it was more political, but it it kind of didn't really resonate um i, I felt and uh it, it it isn't that i don't think he had a point or you know even was i mean doing anything bad it was just that he came off as such an a-hole <laughs> and the occupy wall street guys were not like the antifa guys at all they weren't very smart but um, they were they were at least trying to solve a problem, mostly peacefully, if not stupidly. You know, I always said the Occupy movement should have moved down the street to the Federal Reserve, and then then you would have seen some real real fireworks there. Then those guys in the uh, Goldman Sachs would have been sweating. Um, but you know, the Occupy guys were dopey. They did some good stuff sort of afterwards where they raised money and paid off people's houses and stuff but you know they were like the prototype antifa they just weren't violent they they they, they were incredibly ineffective <laughs> uh, uh, at many levels and just ended up creating another stupid hippie commune that you know bad things happened so frank's criticism of it wasn't unwarranted i just thought he was kind of off the tracks and some of it where he was talking about that they should all I don't know sign up for the army or whatever um, but that being said I don't hold it against the guy as I especially don't hold it against his work which is amazing Frank's work speaks for itself you got the Dark Knight Returns 300 oh so many Martha Washington goes to war which I mention all the time love that comic um, so many so many Daredevil of course and um, so the guy, the lineup, this comic book convention had, was nothing without Frank. I mean, I literally know none of the other people. 
uh, other than one of the woke Marvel creators who, yeah, not not worth anyone's time, let alone my time, in my view. Um, so the economics of a comic book convention goes something like this: you get a you 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 create a con, and you're really in the hole for two to four years before the con really starts making money. Uh, I you know realistically, because you have to put out a lot of money. Nobody's been to your con before. You have to build it up. Now this con I think was in its eleventh or twelfth year or something. So it was, it was at the point where they were making some money, I would imagine, if they're having it that long. Um, but in those first few years, you're really just putting out money so that the buzz goes out. I mean, I just did a video about the Alpha fan. The Alpha fans will go to the new cons, judge them for the rest of the fandom, and then hopefully the next year they go, well, you got to go to this con. It was amazing. Um, and over... Two or three years, you'll build it up, and then you'll start seeing a profit. Um, you have to generally hold it at the same time every year, in the same facility, ideally. And you have to book this stuff out at least a year in advance in a lot of these places. Um, you get bumped because of the weather. You know, sometimes a hurricane comes or whatever. It really screws up a con schedule. Um you also have to book the guest, right? Frank Miller would be a guest. You can't just bring, you can't just ask Frank Miller to show up and expect him to show up. He's got to have a hotel. He's got to have his travel covered. You're probably going to pay him a per diem for food or just pay all his bills. Um, you know, you 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 might cut a deal. There's all sorts of side deals. Sometimes it's you pay the uh, guest. A fee, maybe five, ten, twenty, depends on the. I mean, a guy like Frank, sky's the limit, right? You pay him a fee, and they'll do a signing for your fans, which you he will charge for, and you will charge a fee on top of that, and that's how you make your money, right? So, Frank's going to do a signing and charge, I don't know, twenty dollars a picture or print or whatever. You make it twenty-five. So you're making five dollars every time he makes twenty, or whatever, or you pay him so much you get all the money, which means you know you're gonna have to have a big line of fans to justify that expense and offset it. Um, without that big draw, like a guy like Frank Miller, who's gonna come to your con? You have to rely on people who came to the con last year and liked it. Uh, you have to rely on just fans in general knowing you have to rely on your advertising and word of mouth this is very negative word of mouth okay this is not going to bring in new fans you know in the he-man alpha fan example that i talked about in the other video there is a chance because there's so many millions of people on netflix so many millions of people who watch cartoons there's a chance you will pick up enough people to get a fan base at least to justify the expense. There's almost no chance <laughs> that you're suddenly going to get, and it, you know, it's on a much smaller scale, thousands of people coming to the show because you jettisoned Frank Miller and made the place safer for wokeism. This is like none. That's not a good exchange. What you've done is you've pissed off the majority of the fans who were coming to this thing. And you might have their non-refundable money up front. Um, but they're going to be furious. the Absolutely furious you did this. They will not only not come to the show, they will boycott it. They will rage against it all over the internet. Um, and keep in mind, Frank Miller is such a giant in the comic book industry, he could have his own con. I would I would totally invest money to do Miller Con. Miller Con would be a huge hit. Absolutely. Batman, Daredevil, you know, you'd have the dealers thematically bring tons of Frank Miller stuff. I mean, he has a big enough body of work that that's sustainable. At least at a hotel-sized convention. You know, not a convention center. That would be too big. You'd have to have some other draws there, but you brought in Frank Miller and some of the great 
talent he's worked with over the years. Oh my god. That that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Cut me in if you use the idea of milk. <laughs> You'd of course need Frank to show up. And um, he'd be number one on the list. And God forbid he passes on, even after he goes, you could do a Miller con, just like you could do a Kirby con. I'm sure they've had Kirby cons. Um, because again, it's about the body of work. The other creators on the list for this con, no offense to some of them, um, they just, you couldn't even hold a candle to them. You wouldn't, you wouldn't recognize a single name on the list unless you were really into comics. Um, and I only recognize one other name. And I, well, been out of comics a while, but, um, you know, the only reason to go to this thing, in my view, would have been to see Frank Miller, get something signed, talk to him for a couple of minutes, um, you know, hear him speak, do a panel. That's what you do at cons. That drives the entire con business. If you don't have a big guest, you better have a great deal with the hotel or the VFW hall. It better be a slow, small, kind of flea market con, you know, where guests aren't the issue. It's really, you know, you also have, uh, just like at the casinos, they call them whales. You also have whales in the comic book industry. Whales are the guys with lots of money and they blow tons of cash. And you have that in the comic book industry. You have guys who are big time collectors. We had a guy at my old comic book store. He ran a limo service. He just had money to beat the band. He was really obesely heavy, but um, that's near here nor there. But when he bought something, he bought everything Star Trek. And when I say everything Star Trek, literally anything Star Trek, we were told to order for him. And not just order. So... Uh, you re might remember the Star Trek game cards they, based on the next generation when they first came out. Here's what he bought. They, they would publish black border cards, um, collector edition cards, and white border. Right, The black borders were a little more fancy. They're the earlier ones, and then the white borders are the reprints. And then the collector's one was just a set of all the cards. Whereas if you bought boxes, you were... You were trying to get them like trading cards. You'd have to sort through them to get a set. He would buy a case or two cases of each one. Two cases. And they would come with decks and little packs. He bought two cases of each of those. Just to have. Just to sit in his house. Because he was that hardcore of a collector. He had that. He got the plates. I never knew anybody who collected the Star Trek plates. But he collected every single plate. Again, two. Two of everything. So if they had a special plate, like if they had like a gold rim plate and a silver rim plate, he'd be getting two of each one of them. And he had the money. So he'd just blow it on this stuff. He was absolute uh, fanatic. Absolute fanatic on this stuff. I don't know what his house looked like. His... He must have had a warehouse full of this stuff. He bought so much. So the same thing applies at a con. You have these whales that come in, you know, and I'm sure Frank Miller has them. I'm sure Frank Miller knows most of them personally. Guys who will literally drop five, 10, 20 grand on something Frank Miller did, right? They might commission, you know, he's not gonna do a commission for you unless you pay him those kinds of rates, right? You know, they'll, they'll have whales that'll come in and they'll be there to either pick it up or order one and talk to them and say hi. And Frank will probably know him personally because they drop so much money on him. And those guys aren't coming. Right? And those guys would walk the con floor looking for little pieces of memorabilia probably related to Frank or other stuff they're into uh, and buy stuff. And they'd buy food and they, you know, Maybe they bring a whole entourage of their buddies because they got money and they just blow money at these things. It's a it's a vacation for them. But you disrespect and uninvite their hero, their creator, you're out of your mind. All those guys go away. Like that. And they're usually the alpha fans, so they're gonna they're gonna boycott your con. And if you do multiple cons, they may boycott those as well. Uh, 
you know, this is the kind of event, uh, and I mean the event of uninviting Frank Miller, that will lead someone to go, F this, I'm going to create my own con. And someone will. And someone will. And they'll say, you know, they're going to start, you know, a few of them will and then get nowhere. But a few of them will actually figure out all this stuff and the economics of it. Maybe they have just enough money to do it. And they'll start building up a business to do their own con where they don't have to deal with this nonsense. And what would be the worst thing that would have happened had they not disinvited them? Nothing. It would have been forgotten. It would have been forgotten in a week. Uh, the con would have happened. Yeah, maybe a handful of people would have protested. That would have been a good thing for the con because they would have been seen as these guys who brought in a, 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 a great talent and, and defended him regardless of his political beliefs. And it wasn't even about his political beliefs. It was about a specific comic he did called Holy Terror, which uh, the initial pitch was Batman versus ISIS. Or Batman versus Al Qaeda, I think. And DC said, no, we can't do that. So he ended up doing it, you know, about some hero he made up. Uh, so it was like a superhero versus Al Qaeda. And uh, I haven't read it, but I kind of, I've kind of been. It's like on my list, one of the few comics that I like. If I ever see it, I'm totally buying it and reading it. Um, but. Um, you know, and you could say, well, that's a little extreme for Batman. And you'd be right. I mean, I think I think DC was right to put the kibosh on it for Batman unless they were going to go in a totally crazy direction with Batman. But Batman's still for kids. So, um, but I would have been perfectly happy to say to Frank, listen, uh, Batman's probably not the right character. Why don't you pick some other character? Because Batman's a little too high profile and we need that brand to be more for kids. But then you look at what they did with Batman anyway. Batman Heavy Metal, Batman Naked. Might as well have let Frank do his thing. I mean, at least if you're going to ruin the brand, ruin it in a cool way. <laughs> you know, if you're going to ruin something for kids, at least do something like Holy Terror by Frank Miller. I'm sure it was head and shoulders above Naked Batman. Um, so, I mean, and that book came out 20 years ago. I mean... At least 10, because it came out around, you know, the Bush era, um, which shows you Frank's politics, but I don't care about his politics. Um, and they're not that crazy anyway. He just has some views. And, you know, he's a little bit in his own bubble, too, I think. But ultimately, there's no denying the man's talent and his, his catalog of work is phenomenal. Uh, I think the con organizers made a huge effing mistake. Um, they will, they will be around long enough to regret this. I think within two years, we'll be hearing about this con collapsing, and that'll be the last we hear about it. Right? We'll get we'll get a news story next year that this convention. I'm not even going to mention the name because I want them to be, I want them to go out of business. That next year that no one showed up and that, you know, even this year, even this year, they're probably going to have some problems, but they probably have a bit of a, a, of a war chest, although the pandemic, so who knows? Um, so maybe they'll go out of business next year. Maybe they're already teetering on the brink and maybe this was a panic move to, to save their profits. But really this was the exact wrong move, exact wrong move. Um, I would never, ever attend a convention run by these people if I found that out. I, oh, you're the guys who canceled Frank Miller? I'm out of here. No way. Um, so, sorry to hear that, Frank, but you're still the king of comics. Uh, and literally, if anybody wants to do that Frank Miller con, I think, it's a, I think it's a bold idea. I think it would totally work. And I think people would come to it. I really do. Anyhow, that's my take. Uh, check us out on BitChute and Rumble, and we'll see you tomorrow.